This episode is the second part of my Click to Move series, where we'll be looking at attacking and interacting with enemies and other objects. If you haven't seen the first part, I'd recommend watching it now before getting into this. Otherwise, the project files will be uploaded onto GitHub as each episode come out, so be sure to check that out. So let's jump straight into it. To start us off, my enemy model I'm going to use, just like all other models in this project, are coming from Quaternius.com, which I'll leave a link in the description again. First up, I need to drag the model into our scene and follow basically the same setup as our player. Add a nav mesh agent, change the acceleration to a high value and auto braking off. Add a capsule collider for the object and an animator controller if it does not have one already. Use the same rig as our player, which mine is the king avatar, and create a new enemy controller and assign this to our animator. This will simply contain an idle state for now and I'll set the character idle animation within it. Last thing for the enemy is to create a new layer named interactable and a new tag named the same then just assign this to our enemy. Now the last thing to set up our project is to create a new game object. This will act as our temporary item picker. All it needs is a sphere collider, set this to a trigger. This will act as the collider in which we can click on, then assign our interactable tag and layer. I'm also going to drag in a sword model I made and parent it to our item picker. With all that set up, to start us off, we'll create a new script named actor. This script will hold the health and death functions of any damageable characters. We just need two variables, two integers, one named max health and the other named current health. But the current health will be a public get and private set, so it can be changed only in this script. From this, create a new awake method, which will just set our actor's current health to max. Follow this with another method named take damage, taking in an integer which will be our damage. This method will be called whenever we want to deal damage to our actor. So subtract the current health by the amount dealt and check if the health has dropped below zero. If so, initiate this object's depth. In this method, we'll just add a temporary destroy of this object. This will be an area to add things like drops and so on in the future. Save and close this script and add it both to our enemy and player. Next, we'll create a new script named interactable. We can start this off with defining an enum or a list of our interactable types, enemy and item. Then we need a reference to our object's actor in our awake method, but be sure to check if the interaction type is an enemy as enemies will only hold this script. The only other method we'll need is interact with item, which will just be called when you interact with the object if it is a type of item. This will just hold a temporary destroy, where in reality you can add the item in your inventory or something similar. Save the script, and this needs to be added to both our enemy and item pickup. Now before we edit our player controller, we need to go back and add in a new clickable layer, which will be our interactable layer. Now we need to head back into our player controller and define the behavior for interacting with objects and attacking. I'll add two new constant strings named attack and pick up and these will be played accordingly. Next I'll scroll down and below our movement header I'll create a new header named attack. I always prefer using headers for organization as you can see it in both script and inspector. Within this we can define floats for our attack speed, attack delay and attack distance. An integer for the attack damage and a particle system for the hit effect. We will need two private variables, a bool to check if our player is busy with an interaction, and a new type of interactable named target. Scroll down to the click to move method, and now we just need to adjust it to check if we've hit our interactable or terrain. So first up, we can compare the tag of our hit object for a new tag named interactable. If so, we'll set the target as the interactable component of the hit object and spawn our click effect again. We can now move our previous moving function into an else statement and reset the target to null. Scroll down and now call a new method named follow target in update. Define this method and add a null exception to ensure we aren't executing this script if we didn't have a target. All this script will do is check the distance between our target and the player and if it is within attacking distance, we can call the reach distance method. This will hold our attack behavior or else we'll keep following the target. In this new method, stop the player by setting its destination to the object cell, then check if the player is busy. If so, we won't continue with initiating an interaction, as one is already taking place. This will make sure we aren't spamming attacks and waiting for appropriate cooldowns. Move on and set the player busy as true, then a switch function which will take in the target's interaction type. For now we just have our two types, so I'll just add one named enemy and another named item. Within the enemy, we'll play the attack animation, then invoke two methods, one named send attack, with a delay of attack delay and a method named reset busy state which will take in our attack speed. All these will do is send our attack after a slight delay to match our animation and set our player busy back to false when the next attack is ready. Define the first method send attack which will check if our target still exists 
and if the target's health is less than zero, meaning it's dead and we should stop attacking. If both are false, then we can actually attack it. We can then instantiate our hit effect at our target's position and at a slight offset. Then we can get the component of our object of type actor and call the take damage script, taking our attack damage variable. For the reset busy state method, we just need to reset our player busy to false and set our animations again. We can scroll back up now and define our item interaction, which we'll just call our interact with item method from our target, set the target to null and invoke a reset busy state with a small value like 0.5. And lastly, in our old set animation script, I'll just add a check if the player is busy so we won't interrupt our attack animations. Save our script and let's play test. Okay, looking good so far, but there's a problem. It was happening in the last video also, where the rotation of a player kept resetting when you've reached the destination. We'll fix that now. Head back into the player controller script and go down to the face target method. All we need to do is check if the destination is the player's own position. Then we can stop rotating our player. Also, we'll set a new vector free named facing, which will just hold our target position or our agent destination if we do not have a target. Then set this as our new direction, replacing agent.destination, and save our script and let's play test again. I'll just click onto the enemy, which we will attack three times before destroying it, and I'll click onto the item and it interacts with it. It seems to be working nicely, we just need to add a particle system and our new attack animation to the player. Go into the player animator controller. Add a new state named attack and assign an attack animation. Now on to setting up our hit effect particle. Right click the hierarchy and create a new particle system. I'll name it hit effect and we can adjust its settings. Set a duration of 2. Start lifetime between two constants 0.2 and 0.5. Start speed to two constants also between 0.5 and 1.2. And start size between two constants again 0.1 and 0.2. Make sure to set the stop action to destroy to make sure the object destroys itself when it's done. Go down to emission and set rate over time to 0 and a new burst to 15 k. Going down to shape, I've just set it to a small sphere and set the radius to something like 0.3. Toggle on color over lifetime and add a small fade to each end by lowering the alpha on the outer points. Check size over lifetime and choose the curve which starts at the top and gets smaller over time. And lastly, I've just made a quick star sprite for my material and set it as so. Feel free to set your own sprite if needed, otherwise you can use my own. Drag this into our project view to create a new prefab and set the reference in our player. One final playtest to see if it's all working and it's done. And that's all for the second episode. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please subscribe and like the video. You can also find me on my Discord server and other social media to support my content.